Our, our first keynote speaker is Juan Wang. He's the Chief Technology Officer of Gudang Ada. And I, I think this is a great uh, way to uh, showcase how, how APIs are key to connecting um, companies with customers, with the supply chain. Um, Juan has had a, a, a long path through, uh, through the technology industry, starting in, in China, working for Google, and then subsequently in Silicon Valley and, and London, working for Facebook, and now, uh, and, and now in, in the region, initially with, with Grab and now Gudang Ada. So he has a great perspective on uh, the Asian context as well as the Western context of digitization and more particularly right now the Indonesian context. So um, I'd like to, like to welcome Juan. Uh, can you just check that you can share your, your screen and then uh, we'll let you start. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much, John. Can you hear me? Can you see my slides? Yes, that's very good. Thanks. Okay, okay cool. Let's get started. Hey, good morning, everybody. So uh, my name is Juan Yang. Uh, I'm the CTO of Gudan Ada. So for those who don't know us a lot, so basically Gudan Ada is an online e-commerce, so online B2B e-commerce platform. So basically we collect the Indonesia's uh, FMCG uh, wholesalers and retainers. So they can transact with each, other, with each other. And the benefit is they grow the business together. Yeah. So uh, today, so I'm going to dis uh, discuss some best practice we discussed so uh, we discovered when we digitalize FMCG industry. So as everybody knows, FMCG industry has been a very mature and a very traditional industry. So many people say, hey, it's harder to digitalize this industry. And however, it's a good idea, even with just two years. So we managed to find a lot of very useful insights while we digit digitalizing FMCG industry. Yeah, so uh, that's the reason I want to share the, so share, share the insights here. Yeah, so for today's topic, I'm going to discuss three things. So number one, I'm going to discuss about, the, give some introduction of our FMCG industry in Indonesia. Secondly, so I'm going to share with some uh, industry insights we have observed. And the third one, we're going to discuss about how technology help us achieve this, uh, this vision. Yeah, so regarding to the first one, so uh, some, some industry, uh, industry uh, introduction. Yeah. So for uh, so for those who are not in this region, so a very brief inter introduction of Indonesia. So we are the we are the 15th largest country in the world with land area, and then we have a lot of island. We have more than 17,000 island. Over 60 of them, like uh, so, some people living on the island. Yeah. And then the FMCG so fast moving consumer use this industry is growing super super fast in Indonesia. You can see recently us. There are many more convenience stores. There are many more supermarkets, hypermarket, and drug stores coming up, right? Yeah. So the biggest problem the Indonesia FMCG market right now is is quite fragmented. Yeah. So basically, so uh, regarding to the overview of the whole of the whole industry, so basically there are some manufacturers who produce who manufacture or produce some goods, and there are some distributor trying to distribute these uh, uh, th these goods. From manufacturer to whole centers. And then bigger whole center may sell to a smaller whole center. And then whole center may sell this to a retainer. After retainer, so you can see, so it's go to the like, uh, customer's hand. So basically, there are multiple stakeholders in this whole industry. So manufacturer, distributor, whole center, retainer, and then go to customer. Yeah. So Indonesia is very, very special. So regarding to the retainer side, 80% of our local retainer, so it's, so it's actually like a independent, independent store owners. So in Indonesia, we call them all runs, or maybe mom and pop stores. So basically, so maybe husband and wife, or maybe family, they own a very, very, very various stores. They buy goods from, the, from big wholesalers and sell these to individual customers. Yeah, so basically, this is overview of uh, FMCG industry in Indonesia. It's quite fragmented. 80% of local sale happens on those warrants and the mom and pop stores. Yeah. Uh, this one challenge. Another challenge is regarding to the transportation and logistics. You can see because we have so many islands, so sometimes it's really hard to deliver items from island to island. So the basic transportation is way much more uh, so uh, way much more expensive. Yeah, that's uh, the second one. 
And the third one regarding to the industry. So you can see uh, as Indonesia is the uh, economy is growing very rapidly. So you can see it's quite competitive. And usually, so when we get more stakeholder or more or more steps in this step in this chain, so basically the price usually will get higher. Yeah. So basically, this overview of our FMCG industry in Indonesia. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, we observed some very interesting trend. So of course, so COVID has changed people's life uh, like uh, uh, greatly, right? So you can see we have we have observed that many customers are actually going to are going to online. So including FMCG stakeholders. So now many more uh, small mom and pop stores all around. They trying to order. So basically, order their order their inventory from online. Yeah, mm -hmm. this one. Another one is regarding to the uh, basically. So when the economy grow and uh, so grow bigger, so actually so uh, more so uh, usually the transaction or the sales will become bigger. So this is in general, so market is growing. And the second is so we can see the transportation is improving as well. So as Indonesia government put more put more attention in building the infrastructure, we see the transportation infrastructure are getting better. Yeah. So basically, this is F F FMCG industry. So in Indonesia, there is some special situation, especially regarding to 80% of retainers are coming from family-owned stores, we call it warangs or, or mom and pop. A second trend is I, we see the industry is growing super fast. So no matter online or offline. Yeah. So with that, uh, keep in mind, so uh, business good and are trying to digitalize this FMCG industry. And we get some insight of the whole um, business, the whole industry. So few things. So uh, five insights. Number one. So the FMCG industry is shifting to online quickly. Yeah. So actually, this is a big question we have before we build a good ADA, right? So FMCG industry is quite mature, and there are already many big stakeholders, big or small stakeholders over there, and they are doing their business business smoothly on uh, offline. So whether we really need a digital solution for them or not, so that's a, that's the biggest question. It's not on, it's not proven a few years ago, and however, so with good ADA's practice, we say, hey, this has been like a shifting to online very very quickly, and we much faster than our original expectation. So some data from us, you can see good ADA is only two years uh, history. So we uh, we found in two thousand nineteen, uh, and as you can see, so even within two years. We already managed to get 300,000 wholesalers and retainers just within two years. Yeah. Uh, so you can see, so uh, probably the whole market, we estimate we have about 6 million wholesalers. So you can see, it's just within two years uh, of we launched this startup, we get more than 5% of our, of our customers online. And then we already expanded to 500 cities. Yeah. So you can see from these numbers, at least the number from us, we show, hey, there is a strong market fit to digitalize FMCG industry, and people are willing to switch to online. That's a one. A second one. Uh, so you can see, so uh, B2B e-commerce marketplace is already proven to add value to our FM FMCG stakeholders. So this is also a question uh, we have before. So you can see when Uber get into uh, Uber or Grab or Lyft, when they get into the marketplace, right? So basically, they disrupt the whole, for example, taxi industry, and then they raise a lot of tension between Uber or this like on night night healing and um, and uh, taxi drivers. So at the beginning, we are we are unsure. Hey, when we digitalize this as FMCG industry, whether our existing stakeholders will get annoyed by us or not. So it turned out to be no. So the reason, the reason is very, very clearly no. So the reason is the best practice for us is we are a neutral third party model. Basically, we empower FMA, FMCG stakeholders to do the business instead of displace them. So you see, we put wholesalers, retainers, manufacturers, distributors on one, on one single platform. So all the information are presented to them like in a like, transparently and fairly. So they can make the business decision, like uh, make their business decision smartly within the platform. So this is already proven from good and others practice. So we are not disrupting the whole industry. However, so basically we are adding value to the whole FMCG industry. So basically this is key inside. Uh, the digital, F 
digitize FMCG market or build a B2B marketplace is added value to FMCG stakeholders. And people are willing to use this. Yeah, so there are business opportunity over there. Yeah. So regarding to the third insight we observe, so uh, you can see the, the supply chain is quite big. It's quite complicated. If we just build one component to address one problem, it's not enough. We have to build the whole infrastructure from end to end to provide the best experience for our, so for our customers. So uh, this is some lesson we learned from Granada. At the beginning, we started with a B2B e-commerce place. So basically, whole center or centers, they can list their inventories online. And retainers or buyers, they can buy something from, uh, so, uh, so from, the, from, from the marketplace. This is just one component. Of course, it's added value. However, this is not enough. When we run this business, we say, hey, uh, some people may not be willing to, for example, transfer money. Uh, so like uh, we got the payment. If payment is missing, then of course the transaction can't, can't go through. So which means make us say, hey, we have to build a payment service to complement this B2B e-commerce place. So for example, we need to build an escrow service. We need to like, support cash. We need to support different payment mechanism. So uh, of course, this is important. And so after we see this, uh, we can say, hey, some people don't want to play a transaction. Why? So because the whole center doesn't deliver, and the buyer do not have the vehicle to pick up. Then we think, OK, the transaction cannot go through. So what we need is, OK, we need to build a logistic service trying to de deliver the goods from, buy from center to, uh, to buyer when they do not have the delivery mechanism. Yeah. So this makes us like, a very, very clearly say, hey, the whole infrastructure, the whole industry is quite complicated. Building one component is not enough. We have to build the whole ecosystem. We have to build a omni channel infrastructure for the whole industry. Yeah. The first one, so we have the data. So data is important. This is nobody questioning this. And however, so at the beginning, people question about for small FMCG stakeholders, for example, a family store, do we really need data to improve my business? Because maybe my business is already uh, like simplified. Probably I can do all the optimization using human brain. So the answer is no. So data is definitely important, equally important to all the FMCG stakeholders, including smaller ones. Yeah. So what do we observe on our platform? If we just simply need to hey, for this item, what's the price from each centers? So our buyers is willing to explore and pick the one that fitting the requirement at the same time the price is low. So this is, you can see, it's like a very simple, simple mechanism. We don't even, even use any machine learning or like a, uh, AI, AI, AI algorithm. So you can see people are already starting using data. Yeah, so data is equally important to all stakeholders. And of course, yeah, the, uh, the last one is very, very important. So when we digitalize this industry, we have to put great attention to details. We have to meet all the deep insight of customer needs. So for example, uh, very interesting story. When we build a good other, right? For our logistic service, at the beginning, we, don't, we even don't know hey, how wide the road is. And when we send a big truck to, put, to pick up the goods, of course, our truck cannot get into uh, basically so in front of the store. So this makes us think, hey, to digitalize this industry, we have to fit into our customers' needs. We have to understand, hey, what do we, they really need? So that's the reason when you check our platform, you will say, hey, uh, pretty much we like, uh, even know hey, how wide your, uh, the road is, so we can send the right vehicle to pick up the goods. Yeah. Basically, these are some key insights of the whole industry. So basically, it's going to online quickly. It's at a value. We need the whole infrastructure. Uh, even our small stakeholders, they need data. And of course, so we have to great attention to details to get, this, to get things done right. Yeah. So uh, of course, uh, so uh, there are a lot of values. So basically, faster, cheaper, smarter, and bigger transaction is required for all stakeholders. And technology is proven to be good on all of these. Uh, I'm going to uh, skip these slides and move to our so technology side. Yeah. Uh, so good other. So actually, we are we are focused on the digitalizing technology. Uh, so uh, technology for the FMCG industry. We are a technology company. So that's the reason we want to design the technology solution correctly to meet our needs. So a uh, few considerations we are considering when we design our engineering solution. So number one. The system's architecture should be scalable and should be able to enable fast business iteration. 
So you can see, so FMCG, in, even though it's mature, a lot of new business is innovation or iterations is happening very, very quickly. So if our system architecture is not flexible enough, so that will cause a lot of trouble for us to support new business re requirement. That is in future, so like uh, uh, set up, so uh, basically cause more technical, more and more technical dance for us. So that's the reason, number one, we need to design a very scalable system architecture. So good and other is very good on this. Second one is we want to design a complete set of uh, end user focused solution. So uh, as we observed in the industry trend, we need uh, uh, basically so the whole ecosystem. There will be multiple customer facing solutions we need to build. And certainly, so we need to model and implement our business logic efficiently. So you can see, so we have the B2B marketplace, we have the payment service, we have third party, and so uh, 3PO logistic service, right? So all these components need to be seamlessly plugged into our, our system. And of course, we're building more. Yeah, that's the reason so we need to build it efficiently. Uh, fourth one, so of course, we need to invest in data early. So because we observe data is equally important to everybody, including smaller ones. Yeah. And of course, so, um, so basically this is like an API days, right? So we also discovered that so we all define API will be very, very powerful for us. So you can see, so APIs are defined uh, acting as an interface between our customer requirement and our backend system. And uh, so basically it's a great abstraction of our business requirement. So defining a well-defined API and make sure so it's stable, support all the requirement. Uh, so make a lot of sense. So uh, here I list the architecture of our so business of good other system architecture. So this is quite simplified and uh, quite layered design. So I'm going to quickly go through these. So you can see from A side, so at the very beginning, we have the application layer, which can so contain a, a, like a good compilation of customer good and so uh, customer facing uh, solutions. So for example, the good other application is a main mobile interface we uh, provided to our buyers and sellers for them to do transaction. We have a dryer app for our drivers to deliver logistics. We have standards web for those who don't want to use mobile device, who want to keep using a, like a, a web interface to access our system. And we have uh, many internal management systems, like a marketplace management system, transportation management system, payment management system for our internal operation people to run the business more efficiently. So you can see we have a good compilation of all the uh, customer facing product. And then be, be, uh, below that, we have a strong, like a very strong business layer. It's well modularized. Uh, so for each module, it's exposed a good set of uh, APIs for the applica application layer to use. And when we design each component, we're trying to modularize that. So that makes us more efficient if we want to replace a module or build, introduce new modules into our system. Yeah, and of course, different services talk with its, each other. So uh, using right now, using message view, and uh, so different communication protocols. And beyond that, so it's uh, a huge like, data, a database layer store all the online and real-time data. Yeah. So besides that, you can see, so we already started in, uh, investing in building a data warehouse. You can see all our database can uh, fit into Amazon Redshift as our data warehouse solution. So for the all uh, uh, application data generated, we can populate to S3 and load it to Redshift as a um, so data warehouse solution as well. And then uh, from there, we can use it from Metabase, we can use it from Power BI. We can, uh, so we are building some interesting Machine learning stuff based on this uh, this data, and of course we have real time dashboard to monitor how are things, how are things going on, what's our current situation of the whole platform. Yeah, so a few things to highlight. So number one, you can see we have a very simple design and it's uh, layered here, like application layer, business layer, database layer. When we want to introduce new service, we can just plug it in. Yeah, so this has been uh, enabled us to move move quickly uh, and move very efficiently. Set one, so you can see, so we have standardized component, for example, orders, tasks, so interface API is well defined. And if you want to iterate to a new version, we can simply just replace the module. Yeah. The third one, you can see, hey, even though we are just a two years old startup, we are already investing in a data warehouse. So this is for us to fulfill, keep fulfilling customs requirement in the long term. And this shows, hey, good Anna has a great insight. And we are long term focus, focus on long term. Yeah. So basically, this is our systems architecture. And uh, actually, we already discussed, hey, so discovered this can meet our business requirement very well. 
And even though, for example, our engineering team is not quite big, we only have about 40 engineers right now. However, so these 40 engineers are very efficient and can support such a big and such complicated industry. Yeah. So basically, that's all my topic today. What we discussed, uh, first of so all, we introduced uh, about the FMCG industry. Secondly, we shared some insights, the five insights we observed when we digitalized this FMCG industry. And thirdly, I briefly discussed about our engineering solution, engineering architecture, and how does the engineering architecture enable our engineers to basically uh, digitalize the FMCG industry in an efficient way. Yeah. So now I'm open to questions. So any questions online? Hi. Uh... Juan, thanks very much for that perspective. Uh, as you've gone from the industry um, uh, ecosystem perspective through to what's unique about Indonesia and uh, the Warongs and how the, the different uh, players within the ecosystem mm -hmm. connect. We do have a couple of questions, actually. So mm -hmm. the first one is about, um, uh, about inventory management because <laughs> the um, across the manufacturers, distributors, and mm. then also the, um, the 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 sellers and, and the marketplace. What is um, what is the perspective on on how how best to to manage that and make sure that all players in the, in the system have have early warning about uh, about uh, to to forecast their their needs. Mm. Sure. Yeah, John, that's a great question. So actually, so in my insight, uh, I, that, so there are two. So number one is like focus on the great attention to details. Second one is regarding to data, right? So this can answer the question. So number one, regarding to the great attention to, to details, you can see, so for inventory, what do we observe? For example, same product, maybe different size, or maybe a smaller one or bigger one, or maybe it's a box, or maybe it's like a, uh, 24, 24 bottles of water, or maybe 35, right? So great attention to details. When we model this inventory, we have to not only the quantity, but also the like uh, some description or maybe the unit of measurement. So this one that's key, that's very important. A second one is regarding to data. So data will be keen. So uh, like for us to make a better decision, right? So you can see, hey, when all our retainers, like uh, if they move all the transaction into our platform, then which means, hey, we understand, hey, what's your inventory? You are, you looks like you are going to run out of stock for this item in two days, uh, based on your past trend of sales, right? Then we can, and usually for example, it takes one day for you to order and deliver. Then which means we can help you make the smarter business decision. Hey, you need to order right now to fulfill your business requirement. So basically you can say with this model, good on other is trying to hey, cloud service, the basic like supply chain. So you just need to deal with your customer and it's in, behind you is a basic, is a cloud, Digitalize the FFCG industry to support you. Yeah, that's a value add. Yeah, all right. that's that's a great perspective. So uh, I guess you you've constructed your your architecture to make sure that you're collecting the data that will help make mm -hmm. these data data driven, evidence driven decisions. Okay, thanks very much. And the other question, uh, which um, I want to cover just really briefly, you talked about the the sort of data architecture and APIs. Would you characterize that as as a microservices type of, of architecture, or how, how are you, um, just quickly, how are you making sure that notifications and, and new events can get passed uh, through, uh, through the, to the different players? Oh, sure, sure, sure. So uh, API is just a one, one, one uh, so it's just a one layer we provide, right? So API works best, and number one, like if we have the customer facing product, when they want to talk with the backend, so API is great, uh, is great. that's one. A lot of ones are in future, when we grow bigger, uh, when, for example, some big supply chain, if they have their own in-house engineering, they want to talk with our backend, we can open our API to, to, to them as well. Mm -hmm. But right now, so uh, we well, highly need to focus on our runs or like a mm -hmm. small retainers yeah. or maybe right. uh, medium size. So this is not, not opening right now. However, mm -hmm. so we do have, the, for example, the interface for that. That's one. A lot of ones you can see. So, is hey when we have some information we want to push it back to to our customers right so for that one we just use a standardized notification infrastructure uh, so on the market there are quite a lot of solution over there so basically mm -hmm. we're a big user over there and we are trying to like a basis of you pull or we uh, we push information to our customers great well thanks very much for that perspective um, it's uh, it's been a great start to set the scene for for the uh, for the conference. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Juan. Thank you, John. And uh, please keep watching us, keep, it, keep watching the progress of Good Ada. Yeah, so together we're going to digitalize this whole industry and bring value to our stakeholders. Yeah.